check now. Right? <laughs> I've got four bad news right now. Um, how many of you guys, this is your first uh, B sides ever? Well, that was spectacular. That's 90%. Awesome. Uh, how many of you guys have been to a DEF CON? Well, hey, hang on. Yeah. Not in the last five years. Okay, just check it. You don't count, we don't count. It doesn't count. Okay. How about within the last five years? Okay. So everybody in here is new to security. That's fabulous. Some of you guys have done a badge challenge at DEF CON at any point in your careers. Okay. How many of you guys have showed up and done an Ar Arduino workshop? Yes, again. Okay, so this is a great opportunity. Um, one of the things that I always love every time you go to a, a smaller conference or you get time to sit down and talk to people um, is ways to figure out some of the harder and more simple things. You get a, a badge like this and you get an opportunity to figure out all the nuances with it. This is the same thing that some of us do every day in our you know, daily jobs, but this is fun. And, you know, kids can do it and you can do it and you can do it with your kids. Um, so with that, I would advise you to not make this your just your conference bag, but take it home and you know share it out with other people. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce Paul, who's going to tell you about the, the badges here and um, walk you guys through some things you should pay attention to. So, Paul. Hello, Hello. Uh, welcome to Besides KC. Welcome to Badge Talk. I'm Rickson. Uh, AKA Paul uh, Rickson, who I go by online everywhere. So if you want to ping me afterwards, it should be easy to find me. Uh, first of all, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, we're Badge Pirates crew. Uh, we're here to satisfy your need for blinking lights. So who's awake this morning? That's good, because I'm not. So, uh, so B Science KC has asked the Badge Pirates to design and implement badges for this year's event. But some of you probably don't, probably most of you don't know who we are. So uh, Badge Pirates is a small team of hackers. We have a passion for all things that encompass the badge life. So uh, Badge Pirates, first of all, can you guys stand up, please? Yeah. All right, so uh, we're Badge Pirates. We've got uh, another team right here. Uh, we're going to need Metal Geek, uh, FG, Jugabilly, and Codex Mafia. And we got one more few more to come here right now today. Uh, and we are all from Set PC. Can you hear what? So that kind of really started out after DEF CON 24. Uh, Network Geek and FG had just completed the round of just like smashing, getting all the badges that were available after another year. So shortly after that, a bunch of us from Set KC got together to plan out and implement a badge of our own. So the real first task was to design a badge for Trixie. I thought people were going to grow. We embarked on a journey to concoct the badge for the event, but due to the Equifax breach, Trixie was canceled. But that's okay. Network Geek and FG had another badge up their sleeves. This badge was for DEF CON 25. But some of you may be asking, where do all these badges come from? That's a good question. So, in the beginning, the universe was created, at which time, human beings were often having conferences. We found every reason to have conferences, but we needed to make sure that only certain people could go and others could not. And for that, the conference badge saves the day. But why are there only corporate conferences? Hackers need cons too. So DEF CON, oh, many others, the hackers had their cons. And with their cons, they had badges. Since the beginning to the present day, hackers could identify as being allowed to do that, but do it in a more style than the corporate stuffy cons for suits. So these badges evolved over time from basic to chic, and so we took the nat next natural evolution, which is the electronic badge of DC-14. Uh, basic badge at first, electronic badge quickly evolved. Badges increased in complexity, artistic ingenuity, soon becoming a coveted token by con attendees. The badges increased in complexity and, uh, and uh, so, anyways, we, the, the DEF CON badges last year, I don't know if you knew that, if, we're analog and there's a lot of hubbub, but that's okay, because we come, we're going to solve that here besides KC. This con is our con, so we need our own badge to represent ourselves. We started back in 2010. I'm not sure, uh, 
Uh, do any of the original 2010 B-Sides people remember badges? I could not find any photos of those. So that is kind of like some lost war there. Last year's badge was a lovely Leach Edge badge. As you proudly showed our beloved Casey. And the next iteration identifying Casey's best con. Friends, I present you the 2018 B-Sides Kansas City badge. All right, so let's talk about this huge badge. Um, we didn't want to go overboard. This is our second full-scale badge. We wanted something that was quick to prototype, but still pretty cool. We wanted to incorporate the B-Size KC logo. We wanted blinking lights, we wanted good battery life, and we wanted a little bit hackable so that uh, a number of you guys could uh, all do some little hacking on the badge. So it's a really simple design. We use very few core components. Uh, Part of it is a microcontroller. It's very few pins, uh, small memory, low power. It's easy to build. It's cheap, simple to debug and program. And then the functionality, all it is is lights, LEDs. And then we need a power supply. Common, cheap, strong battery, the CR2032. Ubiquitous, you can get it anywhere, and it'll last all day. So let's talk about the actually building the badge. So last year around December and January, we, uh, had our initial design and we ordered our first prototypes from PCBWay. PCBWay is a uh, PC board uh, and uh, PC board assembly operation in China and uh, very good to work with, a good crew. We got our first prototypes pretty quickly and then we promptly built the badge on January 31st. At the same time, the B-Sides tickets went on sale and within 36 hours on February 1st, the badge is sold out. That's perfect timing because right after that, we actually programmed the first prototype badge. We got some proof of concept code running, we had, uh, ran some initial battery tests, and that's where we found our first problems. First of all, it was the battery test, and the original battery only lasted three hours. It was the wrong battery, we just, had to, we just threw a random battery in there for our, our uh, initial development, but luckily we had already changed that in the final design. The reset button didn't work because I drew it wrong in the schematic. So, but that's okay, we fixed that too. The programming test pads were way too small and required quite a hack just to get it to the program. Uh, there are a few other problems. It certainly was hard, but in the end, we got all the bugs fixed and validated and we sent the actual work just in time for Chinese New Year. So, I, I don't know if you all know about Chinese New Year, but basically, China shuts down for two and a half weeks. Uh, people go home, and home is often far away from the city where they work. And uh, if you're doing business with China, it can seem disruptive. But uh, that is just kind of the natural thing of things. If you're ever early in the year, January, February time frame, uh, plan around Chinese New Year. So anyways, let's talk about how the badge actually works. Really, the badge is just a over-glorified LED circuit but we've added a microcontroller for fun and profit. It's a nice idea, but all those pins on the microcontroller just isn't quite very easy to work with. So we're gonna simplify with the hack of the use of the pins on the microcontroller with a technique called Charlie Plexing. And here, as you can see, there's six LEDs on this picture, but there's actually only three connections here. So you can control a whole bunch of LEDs with very few connections. And this is the magic of making our badge work. Here's a, a, a drawing of the Charlie Flexing circuit that we're actually using. This is a very high level conceptual design. The white pads there represent no connection. Basically, the connection is turned off. The, uh, the red is the uh, positive side of uh, power, and the black is the negative side of power there. Uh, here is like a visual of it in actual operation. As you can see, as we move the actual red and black around, um, it'll light up one of the LEDs, which is shown in red here. And this is a technique that we use to control so many LEDs with uh, such a small and simple device. Uh, because of this design, we don't need a lot of pins, like I said. You can see here, this is the actual microcontroller we're using. It's an 8-pin device. It actually has five input and output pins. Uh, and the key is that the, uh, input, uh, the pins have to have a programmable function and the, the pins also have to be use, usable as an input or as an output. 
So each pin can be both. If you do just an input or just an output on a certain pin, it's not really usable for tribal pricing. The programmable nature of the pins is the, uh, is the, the key here. So uh, by allowing a pin to be an input, it has a high impedance. There's basically no voltage on that pin, on the input pin. So on one, one of those one through five pins, when we set it to input, it's like an open switch. Uh, whenever we set it to an output, it's going to have a voltage. It's either going to be low to tie to ground, or it's going to be high tied to VCC. So with that, we can set any, all the pins to input mode. We set a couple of them to output, and that's how uh, one is a high and one is a low, and that's how we'll power the LED across it. So you can use a uh, formula here to figure out the maximum number of LEDs in a circuit. You'll have, uh, basically the formula is N squared minus N, so uh, for our five pin circuit, n squared is going to be 25 minus uh, five. So we have 20 available LEDs usable in the circuit. So uh, obviously, with a larger design, you get more LEDs. Uh, yeah, you just you know, imagine going to something with 12 I/O pins. You know, it's I don't know the number off the top of my head, but that's a whole lot of LEDs you can control with that. Here is uh, the inspiration circuit that we use, uh, running off of. A, an 8 pin microcontroller and modified a little bit. Here's our actual design. We've added you know, power control or reset, a bypass capacitor, which uh, helps the microcontroller operate a little bit more stable, and a, uh, a programming pad, so uh, to make it easy to hack your edge. Here's the final PC board layout here. And once we're done with the hardware design, it's time to code. And that's where I pass it off to other members of the team. So, uh, there's a ton of examples out there. Charlie Plexing, Google it, you can read up on it, you'll see more explanations, you'll find a bunch of code, I guarantee it will confuse you. But if you, uh, on the, if you can read the code here, the bottom, the basic uh, essence of the way it works is, you can see here, you're setting the pin mode. You're setting them to input, you set them all to input at first to disable all the LEDs, and then you choose a couple of pins that you want and set them to output mode. And then you'll write, you'll set, uh, and a high output signal on one, and a low output signal on the other, and that's basically the essence of how it works. Uh, we decided to make this, uh, develop this project in the Arduino IDE. We wanted to make it accessible for everybody else after the con to be able to get in and get started with this. They've all been programmed with a bootloader, so it's literally as easy as installing a couple of libraries into Arduino and then uploading your code to it if you have a program. And uh, speaking of programmers, you can use any AVR programmer. There's the uh, USB ASP, is that first one in the upper left, the AVR ISP, upper right, those are a couple of really common ones. But even if you have an Arduino Uno lying around or something, uh, with a little bit of modification, you can use that as a programmer too. So uh, some Googling will show up some information on that. Um, and that is pretty much it. Uh, so. Uh, our team here, uh, we got a pretty diverse way to cover everything. Uh, FG did uh, like all the PC board layout. Uh, Jigglebilly did the uh, uh, programming. Network Geek is our manager and whips us in time to get everything going. Um, and then it, it just kind of shifts around on all the projects too. Everybody's roles moves around, but it's a lot of fun. and. Uh, so I guess at this time I'll open up if anybody has any questions you think we'll, uh, that you want to bring up here and also will be available afterwards. We have a, uh, back by the DJ booth, we have a room with a table set up. If somebody has a broken badge, we might be able to repair it. Uh, you can also come in to say hi and ask us questions. But in the meantime, does anybody have any questions that uh, something gaping that I missed here? Yeah, uh, yeah, come up to see us if you have any questions. We also have some uh, uh, some of the PC boards of the badges up here if you want to come take a look. I've got a few other conference badges up here as well. Uh, and we'll also have all these back in the, uh, the Badge Pirates room. So, uh, thanks for... Oh, well, yeah, and then as far as programming goes, yeah, uh, I mentioned you can do those yourself, but uh, we actually have a whole bunch of programmers and we're gonna make them available at little cost. Uh, basically, donate what you can and um, we'll have them back in the Batch Pirates room. Um, 
suggested donation around approximately five dollars. If you can't afford anything, you know, you're a starving student, that's great too. So come back and see us and let's start hacking. Thanks. We have a, a little bit of information on the badge there. We're going to be adding additional information as well. We have a GitHub page with the code with our reference design on there as well. And by the way, there might be an Easter egg in the badge. You might be able to find it with the code. Uh, you might find it just by playing around or accidentally using it. But, uh, but yeah, more information is available there, but also come, come talk to us if you have additional questions. Thanks.